Hello everyone and welcome to our webinar. Can digital analytics uh, get you promoted? I'm very excited to have all of you here. Uh, just a little bit about me and about uh, the webinar itself. Uh, uh, my name is Michael Loban. This is a picture of me uh, doing skydiving in Dubai. Uh, one of the best uh, experiences I've had over the past uh, couple of years. If you ever find yourself on that uh, side of the world, I highly recommend it. I work uh, at Infotrust, uh, which is a global digital analytics uh, consulting and technology company, and I serve as a chief marketing officer, uh, helping uh, many of our clients um, uh, define what their digital analytics uh, journey looks like, uh, what is digital transformation for their business. Uh, I enjoy contributing to different articles such as CIO Magazine and Adweek on various topics around the analytics, uh, uh, online privacy, different regulations that are taking place. And uh, on the personal side, I'm an avid runner with the goal to run a marathon on every continent. There's my contact information. Uh, please uh, feel free to reach out with any questions. Uh, during the webinar, we are going to uh, answer questions. Uh, so please uh, feel free to use the chat panel uh, on your right uh, at the question and uh, uh, take uh, breaks uh, to answer those. Additionally, there are some handouts that are attached. And uh, during the webinar, I will share links uh, to upcoming uh, another upcoming webinar and to an ebook that we actually wrote uh, about this topic of how digital analytics can ha help you get a promotion. And you can download uh, uh, that uh, ebook by clicking the link. Uh, after the webinar, uh, everything will be shared. Uh, a link to the recording. Uh, we will also share the slides. Uh, so uh, watch out for the follow up email uh, that will be sent uh, probably within the next uh, few days. And with that, uh, let's, let's get started. So how did this webinar come uh, to be? Uh, I read this uh, fascinating uh, statistics, at least I found it fascinating, that says in just seven years, uh, over 100 chief digital officers have become the CEOs of presidents of organizations. And on one hand, it seems uh, very intuitive, right? Digital transformation is a very hot topic today. Uh, many companies are going in this direction and those that are becoming successful, those that are able to transform themselves and really excel, uh, their executives take a lot of credit and the overall, because of the results of that success, they're able to grow, transform their organization and hence get a promotion. And as we were looking at this uh, data uh, and uh, our own clients where we see this to be true quite a bit, uh, uh, we started to ask ourselves a question, well, are there certain rules or practices uh, that these executives uh, do uh, follow uh, to become more successful? And then we decided to uh, take a step back from a chief digital officer and simply say, how can marketers that live in a world of analytics use uh, what their access to data, uh, use what they're doing to become better at uh, uh, getting a promotion. So how can access to analytics get us a promoted? What are some of the things that we can be doing better as uh, as marketers uh, to become successful within the organization by doing this type of work? And uh, the webinar today uh, is a collection of uh, not just our thoughts on the topic, but what we see to be working. So what do some highly effective marketers do using analytics? that allows them to be successful and allows them to hence get a promotion within their organization. Promotion is not uh, at the end uh, goal be all uh, for everyone, of course. And our goal is to make sure that our marketing campaigns, our digital work is being successful. But certainly if it is, uh, it is uh, nice to get recognized uh, for that work. Uh, studying uh, different marketing uh, managers, marketing executives, uh, and trying to understand what uh, do they do differently to be successful, we found uh, that there are three things that, that tend to stand out. Uh, number one, they measure, uh, they understand, uh, and they explain uh, differently, and they're able to influence uh, uh, what uh, the customers are doing in a slightly different way than others. So, we will talk about uh, what uh, these highly effective marketers are doing uh, 
in terms of measurement, in terms of understanding what is taking place and how they explain what they understand. A lot of times I find myself in a conversation with uh, uh, marketers or analysts and uh, I hear this, uh, you know, we have access to all of this data, but our company does not pay attention to our reports. Uh, maybe you see something very similar within your organization. And I have to say, uh, quite often, we are the ones who are responsible because although we understand what has taken place, we are not able to properly explain it to our executive team, to our management. So we need to get better at explaining what is taking place. So let's talk about measurement. It seems like uh, everyone should be measuring. Uh, um, hence, we are doing a, a webinar on analytics in a time when analytics is one of the hottest topics and uh, jobs in the world. But many marketers tend to focus on metrics that are not necessarily the right ones. So we think about common metrics and KPIs. Those are our click-through rate, the number of visitors that come to the website, the bounce rate. Um, we, maybe we look at the conversion rate and then we present this information to our teams and to our executives. And this is an area where we find uh, a little bit of uh, feedback uh, in the lines of, you know, this is good, but tell me how my business is performing. You know, these metrics are good, but we need something to really grow our business. We don't know how something like a bounce rate actually impacts our bottom line. Uh, the issue here is uh, when we talk about measurement, we tend to focus uh, often obsess this uh, one-time interaction. So this is what is taking place on our website right now. This is what's taking place with our marketing right now. And um, when we want to get successful in our measurement, we need to be aligning what we are measuring on day-to-day -day basis uh, with overall company objectives. So the first question is, what is the number one or top two, top three marketing objectives? It certainly is not to drive engagement on a website. It is not uh, to reduce number of uh, uh, crashes within our apps. The objective can be how do we replicate our offline business success digitally? Or how do we increase profits by reducing our operating costs associated with each individual online transaction? How do we increase profits by retaining our best customers and building advocacy? So when we talk about uh, measurement, we need to understand how do we measure marketing and its impact on some of these core business objectives and be able to explain to the leadership on how some of uh, our KPIs or key performance indicators impact uh, these objectives and the actual business bottom line. That's what allows uh, for us uh, to get into those C-suite meetings and uh, make sure that our information, our dashboards are the ones that are being shared, are the ones that are being looked at. The other thing that uh, uh, marketers uh, that are successful do well is they focus on long-term success. Right? Uh, we uh, need to obsess about who are the best customers for the business. Who are the customers that will generate the most value for our business over the next uh, four, five, six years? Not just uh, uh, who are the customers that are generating the conversion rate right now on the website. And as such, uh, uh, these types of organizations or marketers, they tend to focus on customer lifetime value. Right? We need to understand who are the customer segments that are going to be the most profitable for our business long term. Here is an interesting quote by Avinash Kaushik, uh, who is one of the best known authors in that space. And he talks about uh, his love and appreciation for marketers that focus on lifetime value and not just measuring uh, one-time interactions. So why CLV is so important? Well, one is because it helps us identify best customer types and cohorts. And this is something that anyone within the organization will be able to understand is let's not just market our products and services to everyone, but let's define who the ideal customer is and how these types of ideal customers are buying and viewing our products. It allows us to show and calculate what the true cost of acquisition should be. 
right? because if uh, we have an opportunity to generate a lifetime customer we might be willing to spend a lot more on customer acquisition rather than if we are simply taking into account one-time conversion and the uh, CLD data matters uh, quite a bit uh, for, not just from the revenue standpoint but from our budgeting standpoint our most loyal customers are worth up to 10 times the value of their first purchase, yet only 75% of customers only transact once. So as you can imagine, uh, those marketers that are successful, they tend to understand the difference between customers that are short term and the ones that might transact with our business only once or twice versus customers that will stay with our business for a long period of time. Hence, we will be able to generate much larger value for our business. As you progress in your, in your job and uh, whether, whether it's uh, calculating customer lifetime value or other objectives that you do within the organization, focus on communicating your progress often. You know, we often say that uh, when uh, there is a digital transformation project that is going on within the organization, there are a lot of eyes on it, right? Everyone, every executive wants to understand what is uh, taking place, how that is taking place. And we need to communicate our progress uh, uh, to the team overall. There is almost no such thing as over communication. Keep in mind, if there is such thing as the digital transformation within your business, it means that everyone knows something has been left behind. Something be, is there that we did not pay as much attention to over the past, hence we need to transform. So think of yourself as a salesperson in this role. You need to sell what you're doing to the wider audience. You need to make sure that everyone is aware of the work and of the progress that you are making. The other thing, uh, once we are able to focus on the right type of measurement, again, I want to stress the word the right type of measurement. We, it's not just about any type of uh, metric or API. As we mentioned, it's about measuring uh, things that tie to the company's bottom line, focus on long-term success. We need to get better at explaining what is uh, taking place with our customers and how do we understand customer behavior. A lot of times we present these types of dashboards uh, to our executive team when they ask us, tell us how the marketing is performing. Uh, we report on things like total sessions, we report on bounce rate, time on page, uh, number of visitors, number of submissions, uh, whatever that might be. And all of these are short-term interactions that are taking place across your website or across your mobile application. Uh, these are the common dashboards. And there's no surprise that the executives very rarely pay as much attention as we want to these types of reports and dashboard is because these reports don't help them understand what is actually taking place on the website. We are looking at metrics, but knowing what is taking place does not mean that we actually understand why this is taking place, that we understand the use case, we understand the reason behind this. We all hear this uh, uh, term, we need to be able to tell a story with our uh, data, with our analytics, but what does it actually mean to tell a story? Right? With all this conversation about how decisions are being made, uh, we can see that uh, the number one way companies actually make decisions is based on gut instinct. This was a report done by Marketing Sherpa. And as much as we like to think that companies make decisions with data, Interestingly enough, few companies actually use data to make marketing decisions. A lot more companies use their gut instinct. And the reason for that is, although we have access to every dashboard, every piece of information that is, av that is available, we do not understand what this data is telling us. And so what we need to do is become better at explaining why something is taking place versus what is taking place. So how do we build a narrative where we can explain 
why our bounce rate is changing, why our conversion rates are changing, why our ideal customers may be buying more or buying less. What is the intent behind those actions? So we need to develop a narrative. And again, everyone seems to be talking about uh, we need a story, or we need to tell data, we need to tell a story without data, but what does it really mean? So let me propose a framework that we can be using when we tell a story about uh, what is taking place uh, with our customers. So the way we uh, like to think about the narrative is in a, a format of who, what, and what happened. So let's say we're analyzing a report. And the first question is, who is this report about? So by looking at uh, uh, my either Google Analytics or looking at my Adobe Analytics, I can see that there is a, a person. Sometimes I can even uh, identify their demographics. I can identify the area where this uh, person geographically came from. And I can say that this person is a new visitor or an existing visitor. So have they been to my website before or not? So who, now I can turn this into a narrative and I can say, and in this case, Amy, or somebody like Amy from New Jersey or from this region, never been or never shopped before on my website. So now it becomes a lot more personal who I'm talking about. It's easier for me and for my audience to associate themselves with my customer. Then we can say, well, what happened? So the hypothesis can be, well, Amy came uh, to my website via display advertisement. So potentially, because I know that there was a click on the ad, uh, Amy liked the promise of the advertising. She liked the message and she arrived on a mobile landing page. The reason I know this is because my Adobe Analytics or Google Analytics is telling me that uh, a visit came on a mobile device and I can uh, I understand what landing page the person went through. So I don't just say what my conversion rate is on, mo mo on my mobile devices or what is the click-through rate on my ads, but rather I try to build a narrative and explain what actually happened. And then what was the result of this? Well, my hypothesis is that maybe Amy was overwhelmed by a lot of offers because looking at my mobile page, there are a lot of different uh, product offers. I know that uh, there was an exit rate, so Amy left the website in less than 20 seconds. So here is my narrative. I know who, I know my cohort of users and my cohort of users, uh, let's say comes uh, from a certain region my cohort of users either has shopped with me before, has not shopped. I know what happened to those users. All of them clicked on an ad, all of them came on the landing page, and then um, all of them dropped off. Hence, uh, there was a very high bounce rate on my website. So what is telling us about a story, a narrative or report? Both are equally important. But when we want to build a case for analytics within the organization, we need to become much better at actually telling a narrative and helping our audience, our executive, our management team understand what happened and why it's happening versus just uh, putting together a report from them where they have to do it themselves. If you become the type of person that can take this report and construct a narrative and present your team with this narrative, they will never go back just to reports. They will always look at you as the person who can take these reports, who can take the analysis and translate them into a business language where now it becomes much easier for us to form a hypothesis on what we can be doing next. And certainly as we build these narratives, as I mentioned before, we need to focus on how do these activities, how do these behaviors impact our bottom line. Getting constantly stuck merely on one time user metrics interactions such as bounce rate really 
hurts our ability to tell a comprehensive story and show how these types of behaviors affect overall company profitability. On the other hand, if we are able to build out a narrative and explain what is happening with our customers and build a hypothesis about why that is happening to our customers, it becomes much more vivid that if these type of behaviors continue, we might not be able to hit our overall company goals. So we've talked about two out of three items. Now let's talk a little bit about influence and what we mean by influence. And uh, please, uh, just a reminder, if, there are, if you have any questions or certain things that you want to uh, ask, uh, uh, please uh, post them in the uh, question panel and we will address them. Interestingly enough, uh, what we uh, start to see is that the root cause uh, a lot of times of failure in digital marketing or in digital marketing campaigns is not the lack of uh, creative uh, advertisements but it's simply lack of structured the thinking, structured approach. We all tend to talk about testing and how important testing is, but we think about testing just as the way to test a, a header, to test a subject line. In reality, uh, we can think about testing more as our ability to influence certain types of decisions. Why do we test home pages? Why do we test the advertisements? Why do we test creative? Uh, uh, is because we want to see how a different messaging or a different uh, maybe page element can influence the user behavior. Ultimately, this is what we are after. We want to influence the behavior of our customers or of our prospects to make another purchasing decision. So the question uh, that I would like to pose in front of you is, uh, how do we influence our audience so they can make the right decision? Now, we tend to think about, again, testing uh, as uh, usually just the ability to test uh, you know, different uh, elements on the same page uh, or uh, test different subject lines, uh, test email uh, uh, headlines, whatever that might be. I would like to suggest a, more, a different, slightly different methodology for how we can uh, test things and how we can influence behaviors. And there are two, there are really four types of these types of tests that we can run. On one hand, uh, we have incremental testing. So tests that can allow us to increase the conversion rate by maybe 2% or 3%, right? We know that something is working and we just need to make it incrementally better. On the other hand, we have exponential testing. And exponential testing is something that we see highly correlates with organizations becoming successful with digital. It's the ability for companies to test new value propositions, to test new business models, to see how the audience will respond to them. And uh, we can certainly test information with our existing customers, or we can uh, target our prospective customers. So let's look at a couple of examples. One is a um, type of test targeting our existing customers uh, is something like newsletter subject line, right? Why is that incremental testing? Well, because we already know that something is working. Uh, and we are targeting our customers uh, or our existing audience, hence it is the newsletter subject line. So we know uh, that they already are getting our a newsletter and uh, we just need to improve it just a little bit. Our exponential uh, uh, testing it might be piloting a subscription service, meaning that in the past we've only sold the uh, uh, products uh, on the website. Now it is our opportunity to test uh, how we sell. So maybe we can introduce a new subscription service via we package your products into a bundle and uh, send uh, that bundle to our clients or to a certain group of clients on a monthly basis. And a lot of times you don't actually need to build out a full subscription service offering just to test it out. 
you can structure uh, a landing page with a compelling offer, explain what you're doing, and simply test how many of your customers would be interested in an offer like this. So it is uh, testing, but again, testing of something that we currently do not have. So we can test a new value proposition or a new service model. The other thing that we can test is potentially entering a new GR market. If we only sell our products in North America, what would it look like for us to test uh, entering uh, maybe Canadian market or entering uh, another uh, geolocation where we have not worked before? And again, I would challenge uh, and say that we often do not actually need to build the solution or our ability to sell or enter a new geo market until we can prove that there is a market interest and there is need. And incremental testing uh, for our prospects, such as landing page design, where again, we structure, we build new and test landing pages, targeting people that have never shopped with us before. So as you can see here, the organizations and the marketers that are successful uh, in influencing customer behavior are those that are trying not just to test uh, one-time interactions such as uh, how many people we can get to reply to our email or we can get to open email, but those that are constantly test new service offerings, new value propositions, and trying to bring new capabilities to market. It's important to notice that not always you will be able to come up with something that will immediately grab a market's attention. But this is why it's such an amazing learning opportunity is you can test a new potential service and see does the market respond positively to that or does the market respond negatively to that without actually spending all the money to bring in it to market. So in summary, what are some of the things that we can be doing better? Well, one, as I mentioned, uh, really focusing on measuring and plan for long-term success. Not just the success of one marketing campaign, but marketing success of the organization. Our ability to measure and plan how our KPIs tie to the company's bottom line. Tell and sell a narrative about what our audience is and is not doing. Again, very important, it is our ability to be able to sell to the organization, not just the value of analytics, but what is actually happening uh, with analytics. We tend to believe that data speaks for itself, but that's not quite true. We need to get much better at explaining what the data is, is telling us. If we are seeing the report about what happens to our users, we need to build a hypothesis why this is happening, what were their intentions. And constantly get in the habit of identifying behaviors that we would like to influence and test not just new subject lines, new design elements, but actually test the new uh, service offerings and new value propositions. Because our ability to test those and bring those to market is one of the ways that we found uh, you can really differentiate yourself from everyone else and hence make the company successful and hopefully get a promotion in, uh, as part of that success. So we have a couple of questions. Uh, the first one is, uh, uh, I mentioned the CLV, are there any companies that are utilizing this right now? And in the media publishing space, any tips for analytics professionals in this vertical? So the first question about uh, CLV, there are absolutely many companies that are utilizing a uh, customer lifetime value model. Because again, the importance of customer lifetime value is that you are able to segment your customers based on uh, really how valuable they are to your business. So you do not market to everyone in the same fashion, but you simply determine that these audiences are the ones that will generate most value for your business, uh, 
maybe medium amount of value at least, and then you can uh, determine how you can service them based on uh, what cohort they belong to. So I would say there are many retailers uh, that are doing this right now. Uh, I would say this is definitely one of the trends of uh, 2019, and we will continue seeing uh, more of it in the future. And uh, in the media and publishing space, uh, absolutely important to understand that you might not have a customer lifetime value if you don't have a subscription, right? So if you have a subscription uh, in your media website uh, and I pay, let's say, $9.99 a month uh, for my subscription, your customer lifetime value models would be fantastic, right? Because it's a subscription business. So in that case, you might want to focus on uh, churn and understanding uh, why and at what point uh, your customers stop paying you. Uh, if you do not have a subscription model, then the question becomes, well, how do we drive uh, uh, engagement, but not just engagement, but how do we drive uh, ad revenue and how those two correlate, right? So what type of engagement, what type of content helps us uh, uh, generate more ad revenue for the business? And another question, uh, if you will be able to access the presentation uh, later. Uh, yes, absolutely. The presentation will be shared uh, after, uh, after the webinar in the follow-up. Uh, two other things, as I mentioned, to keep in mind. Uh, one is if you're intrigued by the topic and uh, would like to understand a little bit more about what you can be doing on a daily basis, uh, we published uh, this uh, ebook a step-by-step -step guide on leveraging data analytics to help you get the next promotion. And I did post a link, uh, so that is available to you for download. And uh, we have our next uh, webinar on May 23rd. And uh, uh, this one will be a little bit more uh, focused on the technology itself. And uh, my colleague, Amin, I will talk about Google Analytics 360 and the, the Google Marketing uh, Platform and how businesses can uh, maximize the value of those two solutions. And uh, does that um, uh, hope uh, the content of today's uh, webinar has been beneficial? We finished a little bit earlier, but if you have any other questions, I will be online for a few more minutes uh, to answer uh, those questions. Uh, otherwise, uh, um, thank you for joining us today, and uh, we will send out uh, content uh, probably within the next uh, couple of days. Thank you.